this lesson focuses on the area of parallelograms. Most of us should know already that the area of a rectangle is length times width, right? We're taught when we're in elementary school that to find the square footage of something, we can multiply the length times the width of an air of the uh, rectangle and we can figure out what the area is, okay? Now, a parallelogram is sort of like a rectangle, but it's slanted. So we know that the area of a rectangle is just length times width. So if I could take this parallelogram and turn it into a rectangle, I can very easily figure out what the formula is to find the area of a, um, a parallelogram. This triangle here, okay, if I were to take this and slide this over and put it here, and now pretend that this doesn't exist because I've moved it over, this was originally B, and H stays the same. So the area of a parallelogram is B times H, where the B is the base, and the H is the height. Remember, the height and the base must make a right angle. They have to be perpendicular to each other. So look at number one. In order to find the area of this parallelogram, I would just multiply 6 times 17. which is 102. Now, a long time ago, you probably said, somebody said, oh, you have to put area in square units. It's square units. Well, let's just talk very quickly about why. You're technically multiplying six inches times 17 inches. So six times 17 is 102, and inches times inches is inches squared. Okay, number 12, just go in here, multiply. 12 times three, the area of this parallelogram is 36 feet squared. Number three, be careful with your units. This is three yards. This is three feet. It doesn't matter how you do this. If you want to do it all in feet, that's fine. If you want to do it all in yards, that's fine. It really won't matter. So if you wanted to, you could change three yards into nine feet. And so nine times three would be 27 feet squared. Or you could convert them all into yards, and three feet equals one yard, so the area would also be three yards squared. Okay? In number four, you don't have the height. You have this slanted measurement right here. But this triangle is isosceles, which means it's a 45, 45, 90. So if I were to use the hypotenuse, I could figure out that this is six, and this is six. You don't actually need the bottom six because remember, opposite sides of parallelograms are congruent. So the base is already 10. And now we know the height is six. So six times 10 is 60 inches squared. Number five is just like number three. So we're going to skip this one for right now. Number six, you have to work backwards. It says the area of a parallelogram is 36. The height is 12. So what? times 12 equals 36. The base has to equal three. Number seven, it says the area of parallelogram is 24. It lists all the different combinations of bases and heights. Now I need you guys to understand that this parallelogram where the length is 24 and the height is one is different from a parallelogram where the length is one, but the height is 24. So yes, you must list all possible combinations. So let's just start by doing the base and the height. We'll just make a table of values. You're really just looking for all the factors of 24. So one, two, three, four, not five, six, not seven, eight, not nine, 10, 11, 12, and 24. And then you're just matching up what the factors are. So this would just be the chart backwards. 24, 12, 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. You could just leave this like this. You don't have to really list them all out. Here's one of my favorite questions. The area of a parallelogram is 72. 
what is the probability that the sum of the height and the base is greater than or equal to 28? So we're going to do the same thing we just did. Let's list all the factors of 72, starting with 1. Four, six, eight, nine. They should start to repeat now. Um, I'm sorry. They should not start to repeat now. Eight, nine, twelve. 18, 24, 36, and 72. Okay, and then just match them up. So 72, 36, Okay, so now what is the probability that the sum is greater than or equal to 28? So I need all the numbers that are greater than or equal to 28. So that's, uh, actually let's make a separate column for the sum. And the mathematical symbol for sum is this little sigma. Just a little fun fact, you don't need to remember this, but that is the symbol for sum. So you have 73, 38, 27, 22, 18, 17, 17, 18, 22, 27, 38, and 73. So how many of these are greater than or equal to 28? Well, one, two, three, four. There are four out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 combinations, or a one third chance, approximately 0.33. But let's just stick with one third. Okay. And then for these last few, let me just erase this. We need to activate some prior knowledge here. So number 10, you have the base, but you don't have the height of this parallelogram. Notice that the height of the parallelogram is also part of a triangle. And it's part of a triangle where you have a 60 degree angle which means that if this is 60 and this is 90, this has to be 30. So here's your special 30, 60, 90. Please do not give me decimals on a question like this. 14 is your hypotenuse. The side across from 30 is seven. And yes, technically this side is seven root three, although we don't really need to know this. We just needed seven because that's the height. So seven times 25 is seven, one, uh, sorry, 175 inches squared. Number 11 sort of looks the same, but there's a lot more going on in number 11. Because you only have the height, but you don't have the base of this parallelogram. I'm going to give you something that's not in these notes. I'm not, you're not allowed to make this up. I'm allowed to tell you because it's not in this picture. Um, I'm going to tell you that this right here is 24. Eight. Okay, that was something that I left off by mistake. Okay. If this is 28 from here to here, that means I have part of the base. The other part of the base is in this triangle where it's not a 30, 60, 90, but there's a 25 here and you have this side that's opposite of 25. So instead of using your special triangle rules, you can use trigonometry. From 25 is your reference angle. You have 17, which is your opposite. You are looking for your adjacent because that's this part of the base. And so you should be say saying to yourself that the tangent of 25 equals 17 over what? Remember, you're just going to multiply by x and then divide by tangent 25. So 17 over tangent 25. Make sure you're in degrees. And you should get about 36.46.
okay? 36.46. That's just the length of the blue. So now I'm going to add this together with the black segment. And the length of the entire base is approximately 64.46. That's the base. Now just multiply it by the height. Remember the height was 17. And you should get 1,095 and 82 hundredths. Okay. Very last one. It says the base and the height of a parallelogram are 3 and 15 respectively. So originally you have a parallelogram where the base and the height are 3 and 15 respectively. So it's actually a tall parallelogram. And I know that because respectively just means in the order that I gave you the information. So the base is 3 and the height is 15. So it's actually taller than it is longer. So the base is 3, the height is 15. If you double the base, let's so make this 6, and reduce the height by one third. Okay, so let's just talk about this. You want to reduce the height by one third. Do not take 15 and subtract one third. You want to reduce the height by a third of its original size. So what is one third of 15? Well, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So now you're going to reduce the original height by one third of the original height, which is five. So you should get 10. So that means that the new height is 10. And we're trying to figure out what is the percent decrease in area. This is a very, very, like a big throwback question all the way back to probably sixth or seventh grade, percent of change. So first let's do this. We have to compare these two areas. So let's very quickly find the area of 3 times 15, which is 45. And then we'll find the area of 6 times 10, which is 60. And this is my mistake because this should say increase. So now the question is asking you, what is the percent of increase in the area? Well, most of us are going to want to put 45 over 60, but this is entirely incorrect. You're trying to figure out how much did it change? By what percent did this area change? So you have to ask yourself, by how many square units did it change? And it changed by 15 units, right? It was originally 60, and now it's 45, which means it changed by 15. It changed from the original amount, and the original amount was 45. So now what percent is this? You should get one third. It's about 33.3% or one third. So either of those options will work.